everybody. Welcome to the county seat today. I'm your host, Chad Booth. We're on location in Beaver County at the Beaver J uh, County Jail Complex for our program topic. We're going to be talking about jail programming and contracting of jails uh, for many of Utah's rural counties. It's become a center uh, or a cornerstone of how their jail systems work is by helping the state with inmates through contracting. Uh, we're going to focus today on programming and its importance. We're going to start with some of the basics about programming and a personal look at how it affects people's lives. It's a unique situation at Beaver County where we have 145 of these inmates that take place in a 12-month program. Uh, there's multiple classes that are taught in this, this program. There's anything from uh, family, uh, orientated classes, anger management. We have a class that's presented by the Utah State Extension Office, Inside Out Dad, that uh, some of these offenders get to partake in. Some of them have the opportunity to go to school during the day, uh, which allows them to receive credits to work towards uh, their high school diploma. Some of them actually get their high school diploma while they're in, in the program. Yeah, my story, you know, it's kind of an interesting journey through addiction, alcohol, painkillers, and then I burned my life to the ground. I was at a, I was actually on the run. I was at a house party. For one reason or the other, I, I was at a spot in my, in my mind where I just, I took off running out of the party and you know, I ended up hopping this fence behind us here. Uh, foot or something got caught on the, the top of the fence and I face planted into the mud. You know, my body was left there for dead. You know, because of those heroes, those first responders somehow got a pulse back. I spent seven days in ICU and and I uh, limped out of that out of that hospital seven days later and you know with kind of a newfound hope that that I was gonna, you know, never touch drugs again and I didn't last very long because I didn't have a program that I was working. I just, I couldn't do it on my own willpower. For me, with, with these programs and the power that, that they could have on a life, I know for me personally, that time in there and what it did for me was it, it did, it gave me a foundation. You know, instead of, you know, just sitting around kind of, you know, playing cards, waiting for the time to tick by. It was a place where I could start learning about myself, where I could learn why I thought the way that I thought, learn ways to start thinking differently. It taught me that I had uh, value, taught me to believe in myself again. And this is all during a, a time where I mean, the days tick by, regardless of whether we're sleeping or whether we're looking internally. And it created an opportunity for me to, you know, to finally pay for the things that I had done while getting the help that I needed. Because this, I believe addiction's a disease in the mind. We just want to strengthen them in such a way that it increases the likelihood that they'll they'll be successful and that they leave here with some tools and skills that'll help them as they go out there and in the community and uh, try and you know get their life back on track. Now we have a personal look at programming. We're going to dig into the details and how we improve upon this system when we come back with our panel of experts on the county seat. There are meetings, and then there are gatherings. At the Davis Conference Center, we know the difference. Turn your event into something more than just another business summit. With over 70,000 square feet of flexible meeting space, state-of-the-art presentation amenities, and inspiring architecture, the Davis Conference Center is designed to deliver stellar results in a majestic setting. Take your convention to the next level. Schedule now at davisconferencecenter.com.
149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. The dinosaurs did. In a place that is beyond words, there is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about contracting in jails, programming for inmates, and the importance it has on the viability of rural communities. Joining us for our conversation today, Sheriff from Beaver County, Cameron Noel. Thanks for providing the room for us, Cameron. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Commissioner from Beaver County, Mark Whitney, who has been a big proponent of, of proper jail funding, and James D. Danny Perkins, Sheriff of Garfield County. Gentlemen, thanks for taking the time at this busy time of year uh, to uh, join this conversation. Well, welcome to Beaver County, Chad. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I already got my cheese curds on my way in. I going to say, you don't want to forget them. <laughs> so I would like to start this conversation with a, a historical look at how county jails got into contracting and programming business. When did it all start? We've been programming now for probably around 12 years. Uh, I could just see a need for programming and and corrections the whole the whole concept of corrections has changed I come to work at Garfield County in 1987 mm -hmm. and back then we used to just pretty much just warehouse individuals but then things started to change uh, we live in a state where there is we have one of the highest opioid addiction problems in America uh, and we started to deal with a lot of people that had addictions. Mm -hmm. And corrections started to sway towards programming. So we, we jumped on board. Uh, today, we have a contract with the state of Utah for uh, 93 state inmates. We're pretty small. But my whole facility is based around program. I have uh, one pod where they're waiting to get into the program. I have two pods that are involved in the program. And then I have uh, some other areas that are the inmates has been through the program and then they get jobs and there are work crews, they run the kitchen and that kind of stuff. Chad, I'll give you a little uh, history and then I'll let the sheriff get into the integral details of the programming and all, does a wonderful job. But this year at Beaver County, we're celebrating our 20th year. We opened this facility 20 years ago. We're kind of the innovators of contracting with the state and we're kind of the innovators to, of start programming. Uh, because again, as the sheriff said, originally we was warehousing prisoners, then we saw the need for programming. And so we jumped on board and now we've got the largest programming facility in the state, plus we're also the largest contracting facility in the state with Utah. There are some people who look at this and say, okay, you know, programming is a feel good thing, really nice, but is there a practical side to programming as far as, as jail population levels? Uh, absolutely. So you know, in Utah, there's about 1,600 contracted beds. Those are beds that we contract uh, with the Department of Corrections. And out of those, there's 26 jails. Out of those, uh, 19 facilities in the state of Utah contract. Now out of those, about uh, seven years ago, we started getting a little extra funding for programming. And uh, those programs go anywhere from six months to 18 months. Ours in Beaver County is a year-long program. It's called Beaver Residential Treatment, and it focuses primarily on drug and alcohol addiction. 
and uh, you can see some of the great stories of these inmates that have, have uh, been able to be released and they've got those tools that they've learned in the program here to when they hit the streets back in Utah in our hometowns in our towns all over the state they've got some tools and some ways to stay away from those drugs and alcohol to find jobs and to be better productive citizens and that's what it's all about so there are different jails my understanding is the different jails that are contracting around the state have different programs so, so one may be an alcohol program, another drug program, I believe. Sex abuse. Sex, sex offender counties. Um, <clears throat> are, there, are there any programs that I'm not covering there that are out there that you're aware of? Beaver County has programs that are uh, right now, I'll, I can go through them right now. We have assertiveness, basic music theory, uh, feeling good. Uh, Inside Out Dad, great program from the uh, U Utah State University that teaches inmates how to become dads. Some of these inmates have been in here a long time. They need to, they need to learn how to be dads. Uh, we've got the LDS 12-step program, moral uh, recognition therapy, parenting, relationships, stress management, and one called Thinking for a Change, where a lot of the jails do that also. And that's something a lot of these inmates need to, to do, is to learn how to think for a change instead of uh, committing crimes. And have, have, can you too, as two jails, document that recidivism has dropped during your period of programming? I believe it has. Uh, well and I'd read, I'd read my list, but it's longer than Cameron's, so, <laughs> so we don't have time. I, I just want to know that camera. I don't want to get into a match here, okay? <laughs> so, but, but Cameron's right. We keep these guys busy. Uh, recidivism. One thing that, that I'm noticing is that uh, the inmates that we're getting that need programming are, are deeper in to the addiction problem than what they used to be when we first started. There's, there's a lot of reasons for that. W one of the reasons is, is when we, we, we adopted JRI and we, we made a lot of the, the possession ch charges uh, misdemeanor instead of felonies, we ha we're arresting these people time after time before we finally get them in a position wh where they will accept help. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think our recidivism rates probably uh, not as good as it was a few years ago because the, the people that we are get are so deeply in, embedded in the addiction problem. With that said, mm -hmm. we understand you're not going to save everybody, but we're going to try to save, save them all. And if, if, they, if they go out and reoffend, relapse, you know, we'll give them a second shot because this, this is, addiction is such a complex problem and everybody's different. You can't, you can't have a set of rules that's going to work for everyone. So just, just to be clear, so that everybody in the audience understands, uh, the JRI's Justice Reinvestment Initiative, which was uh, uh, Legislator Hutchins' uh, drive a few years ago to decriminalize some of the felony level grades, make them misdemeanors so we can get them into, out to the jails and into programming and disperse, thinking that that was a better environment for them. So what you're saying, Danny, is that basically you've got a tougher caliber of guy that's showing exactly. up at the gate. Exactly. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I'm the chairman of the, the or the co-chair, or the chairman of the Garfield, or the Iron uh, Garfield Beaver County Task Force. We had a record year last year in arrest. But we arrested fewer individuals. We was arresting the same individuals over and over again. After you arrest them so many times, then you can get a felony. Then you can get these people in a position and get them dried out. And, and that's, that's one big hole that I see is, is we arrest these people and they walk right out my door high on the substance that they come in on. And so after we arrest them so many times, we can get them dried out to where they can start making rational decisions. And let me add to what he's saying there. Uh, to the recidivism rate. Uh, it is different today than it was, but the state still likes us. Uh, the legislature uses their fiscal analyst to get these numbers. That's why they continually give us more money for program because it is working. I mean, the, the drug and alcohol is a terrible thing and it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an epidemic in the state of Utah, but we 
I've been so fortunate to work with the Department of Corrections and also the legislature to get the proper funding to get uh, Representative Hutchins JRI to where these people, we're getting them in here, keeping them for long term, getting them dry to where we're not getting recidivism rate. Excellent. But to answer your question, Chad, mm -hmm. we run some numbers about, oh, it's been about four years ago now, and, and we went back uh, five years. And at that time, and it, and it was really high. I mean, it was like 55% of the people were still out after five years. I haven't done that since, but I know that just we keep track of these guys. And that's one thing that we, we do over there is even after they leave our program, we ha kind of have like an aftercare program. And our therapist goes, if they're up north or wherever you know they're at, and they have these groups. And so we keep pretty good track of these guys. And I just feel like that we're not having quite as much success as, as we did. And we're still having success. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we are, we are making a difference or, or we wouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. But, but we're, we're maybe not as good as we was four or five years so ago. So I want to take a break. When we come back, I want to pick up the conversation and talk about the cost to the jails, to the counties uh, of these programs and, and kind of do a value analysis. We'll be right back with County C. All local products have a story of magical places, real people, and delicious recipes spanning generations. So go ahead and discover flavors you've never tasted and friends you never knew you had. Utah's own Discover Local Food. In our world, the sun shines on high adventure and new experiences are yours for the taking. And everything in you looking to play outside the box. Cedar City, it's time to play. Utah has a national treasure where winding canyons stretch to the horizon, where nature forms elegant structures, and where iconic monuments of the West stand tall. Visitors around the world come to get a glimpse of Southern Utah's legendary landscape and landmarks. Join them and explore San Juan County, Utah's canyon country. Farm Bureau began as a collection of farmers supporting each other to raise the food we enjoy. Today, Farm Bureau membership encompasses everyone, whether ranchers, growers, or just everyday folks like you and me. Members enjoy discounts on items like vehicles and ATVs, or insurance that's very affordable. You don't have to be a farmer to join, and dues are small, but together we make a big difference in keeping our food supply local and abundant. Join Utah Farm Bureau. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about programming in jails. There is a perception by some people, particularly on the Wasatch Front, that I run into that, that when we talk about jail programming and contracting, you go, oh, this is just a slick way for the counties to make money off their jail. Is that a correct statement? No, it's not. When we first originally built the, these jails, our jail, we was a 200 bed jail. Originally we added 200 more on. In rural Utah, it's to create jobs. And that's what we do it for, just to keep our sit or our children home and, and stay here. And I get, let me give you an idea, Chad. Uh, as the sheriff said a minute ago, the county's contract with the state about 1,640 inmates. Mm -hmm. Of that, Beaver County is the largest. We have about 370. Now, we use a daily incarceration rate to figure those out. If you use the state's incarceration rate and what we get paid from the state for, for Utah, which is still all right, we're still, it's not a moneymaker, but we're creating jobs. In our facility alone, 
we're saving the state about six million dollars and overall every year every year and overall it's about a 60 it's about a 60 million dollar savings uh, from all the county jails yeah. to the state of Utah so we're not only providing a great service great programming creating jobs but we're saving the state a lot of money but at the same time you, you end up running deficits, so the, the reimbursement rate for contracting still isn't cutting the nut. It, it does require the jails, the counties, to budget individually to keep those operations going. Would that be correct for both of you? That's, that's very true in my county. We run uh, at a $400,000 deficit last year. Uh, some of that was we had to build some fencing and, and, and add on to some buildings that we were using for some of our programming. So I hope it's not that bad next year. But in reality, we run at a deficit. What we're, what we're producing is jobs. Mm -hmm. And I have 20 guys with, and most of them have young families. You know, they go to our schools, they support our stores, they support our hospitals. That's what, that's what we do. Uh, it said in Garfield County that our greatest export is our children. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is a way to keep some of our, our local kids home okay. and give them a job. So I do want to ask a question, Cameron. From, from the standpoint of, of Beaver County and, and the jail operation, um, the, 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 the funding, you see the legislature as, as doing a pretty good job of trying to stay on top of this. Have they been real cooperative to the requests of the sheriffs? You bet. Yeah, they've, uh, they've, they've thrown some things in there this year, and it's fine. They're, uh, they want to see exactly what this funding is going towards. Realize every uh, two years, Chad, we get new legislators up there that get voted in. They get put on these different types of committees. And so you have to take time and, and explain how this situation or how this works and the reason why we do contracting, that it does save money to the state of Utah, and why we do what we do. You know, the inmates that we have in Beaver County, 95% of those, they're not from Beaver County, they're from the Wasatch Front. They're from counties uh, up north. And so uh, they are asking us to do things, uh, show us our standards, we're willing to do that. Uh, make sure that we're running a good facility, that the programming that we are, that they're paying, paying us back for is, uh, is producing good people when they come out of here. Um, and again, like Sheriff Perkins said, we, we can't save everyone, but we try. We try our very hardest. And on the physical note of, of, of what your question was to, to add to what uh, Sheriff Noel said and Sheriff Perkins, we're, we're pretty fortunate in Beaver County. As I said, we, we deal in large numbers, and the sheriff and his jail commander really run a tight ship out here. They do an excellent job. Uh, but everything we try to do, you know, it's, a, it's very competitive out there for our correctional officers mm -hmm. between the state and, and the counties and trying to make sure we pay these officers as well as we can. So 90% of the money that when the raises we give either goes into more programming or into salary increases to keep, as uh, Danny says, our greatest assets home. Okay. Um, I do want to take a break here. We've got to get one more in. Come back and, and ask a question about how we fix the revolving door problem at the legislature and find a better way to, so you guys aren't having to spend all your time justifying it. We'll be right back on the county seat. My daughter and I had just finished a run at this place called Eagle Point. It's this really cool, but kind of challenging ski resort that has a real family feel to it. She was so excited because she beat me down the run. Deja vu. I saw myself as a kid out skiing my mom. It was a big moment for me, and all of a sudden it hit me. I was making the same memories for her. Beaver County, Utah. Make it more than a vacation. There's a little place on a Utah map Where I was raised, where my heart's at Where the sagebrush grows wild and high and the stars come out at night With the youth reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. All the traveling that I've done over the world, I'd still rate this 
locale as being one of the best. This is some of the most scenic country out there. And part of the appeal for Kanab is it's a small town. It's beautiful. People are very friendly. It's just been awe-inspiring. You just couldn't find a nicer place to come. Welcome back to the county seat. We're having a conversation today about jail funding and programming. Uh, obviously, you guys have to spend a lot of resources going up and pleading your case every time there's a new batch of legislators. What's the solution to try and make this uh, a, a, an easier task for the jails to continue to help the state? Chad, I think the solution is to be uh, upfront and open with the legislature, be transparent in how we run that, and, and be able to show that what we're doing is good for the state of Utah and good for our citizens. Um, every one of these inmates at one time or another have spent time in a county jail. So we know how to, we know how to house inmates. We have I issues and situations and we continuously work on those, but uh, we wanna keep an open dialogue with these legislators and work with them and, and show them what uh, the expenses are and, and show to them that it's a good thing of what they're doing for us. Would dedicated funding solve a lot of this problem? You know what, dedicated funding would help and it would be a start, but it's a continuous change each year. So the biggest thing we can do, I spend three days a week through the whole seven week legislative process. And a lot of that is, as the sheriff said, is educating the new separate representatives and senators on jail contract and how important it is to us and all of that. So education is a great, but yeah, it, you know, just some ongoing funding all the time would be great. And then maybe a, a percentage each year to where we didn't have to fight for those funds would be great. But as I said, the legislature has been great with us. If, so you guys start at 75% of, of the state, right? And then it gets whittled down a little bit with some categorical exemptions, so you end up being at what, 55, 60 percent? Is that, is, is that a good guess? Yeah, it'd be close. I don't know if we want to say it right now because the legislature's not over with yet, so we still are still working on that with them and showing them the numbers of where we're at, working with their fiscal analysts. So uh, but you're, we'll let you know at the end of the even session. Even if they fully fund you, though, it, it's cheaper than putting him. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, a lot cheaper, absolutely. Okay, well, that was, the, that was the main point. Thank you for joining us today. Share this conversation with your friends. Stay engaged in the process. Remember, local government is where your life happens. Be involved, and we'll see you next week on the county seat.